Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 110. On Now You Know. This episode of Tesla Time News was brought to you by our amazing, wonderful, perfect Patreon supporters. If you want to, you can head over to patreon.com and help support us. Also, this episode was sponsored by SFSF t-shirts, which we are both sporting. Uh, very fancy. You can check the link down below. Every t-shirt that you buy, $5 goes to the show. And it's brought to you by the Fairfield Inn and Suites Schaumburg, which is the highest rated Marriott in the Schaumburg market. And that's in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is right near the O'Hare Airport. Right. And it's solar powered. That's right. How does a gas station work? Um, all right, so there's a big tank underground. You have a, a truck come and they pump in the gasoline and then they seal it. They like close it off so that way, and then you pump <clears throat> it. What? Uh, you're wrong, it's not sealed. I thought it was too. Guess what I found out this week? Uh, what'd you find out? You gotta vent it. You gotta let the gases out. Y you know where you let them out to? Um, probably some kind of a safety like a thing that maybe reconstitutes it back into a liquid form or something like that? <clears throat> Where? Into the air. So you're saying every gas station that you see has a vent mm -hmm. and gasoline is evaporating and those fumes are just being vented into the air? Yep. So a new study conducted by health scientists at Columbia University Mailman School of Public Health found that gas stations vent 10 times higher amounts of benzene than previously thought. The researchers attached flow meters to vent pipes at two large gas stations in the United States and measured the amount of gasoline that evaporated into the atmosphere over a three-week period. They found that 1.4 to 1.7 pounds per 1,000 gallons dispensed at the pump evaporated. Okay. Well, I mean, clearly we have regulations for this, and that means that, you know, it's all taken into account. We make sure that we don't have any kind of problems, right? Uh, we do have regulations. Those were set up by the California Air Pollution Control Officers Association, or CAPCOA, and they used an estimate of 0.11 pounds per 1,000 gallons. So let's go back to what our that, researchers wait, found. That, that's 10 times less. That's more than 10 times less than what the researchers found. Right. So basically, the California Air Resources Board used the CAPCOA numbers when they determined their setback regulations of 300 feet or 91 meters from large gas stations. So What's a setback? Setback is how far you can build anything, like a school or a house. Oh, because these fumes would be bad. Right. They're bad for you. They're cancer-causing. And it's, it's not just times. benzene. That it, That's just one of the many things in gasoline, but benzene's horrible. Right. So now we are now learning from this research study that it's over 10 times the amount. So these setback numbers are probably way off. So you're gonna potentially have schools and houses. Yeah, because I, mean, I can think of a couple gas stations where I see houses when I'm pumping gas. Right, and not only that, but think about this. What else is located on a gas station? I mean, the pumps, people are pumping gas into their cars. Convenience stores. Convenience stores. And people who work in the convenience stores, people who work at the gas station. Right. So now if it's turning out that 10 times more benzene is in the air than we previously thought, that means that that's affecting all these people who go to these convenience stores and who work at these pumps. Or people who work like, usually there's like a little, you know, mechanic shop. Right. So the mechanics are also being exposed to this. So it's not exactly. just like, it's not just like a few people. It's not like the guy who pumps the, the gas into the ground from the from the big truck. Right. It's everyone who visits a gas station. And, and here's the thing. This isn't that hard. I mean, like, it's a pretty simple thing to do. They have a vent pipe and you put a flow meter on it. I'm sure that anyone could probably test for this. Right. Why wasn't this constantly being tested? Because, I mean, if you live in, like, Arizona and it's much hotter, you could presumably imagine that the, the tank would have even more stuff. I mean, they were testing in the Midwest. Yeah. I mean, according to Marcus Hilpert, who's a PhD associate professor of environmental health sciences at Columbia's Mailman School, he said officials should reconsider their regulations based on these data with particular attention to the possibility of short spikes in emissions resulting from regular operations or improper procedures related to fuel deliveries and the use of pollution prevention technology. I mean, because keep in mind, when you're pumping gas into that tank, when mm. the big fuel truck comes and pumps gas in, it has to vent out even more than normal. Oh, because all that vapor that's sitting at the top of this empty is getting tank displaced. has to leave. Right. So, I mean, oh. when you see that truck coming, get out of there. Right. 
wow, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that I haven't been to a gas station in a couple of years. Yeah. That, that makes That's another feel. advantage of being an EV driver. <gasps> <gasps> so let's take a look at this chart that we showed once before back in July. This is from Bloomberg, and they put out this chart of Tesla Model 3 output compared to other car manufacturers. Okay, so I can see the Tesla line, and then I see a bunch of jumbled spaghetti exactly. above the, it. At the time, Tesla was only putting out about 3,000 Model 3s per week, and went, with this jumbled mess of lines, I kind of walked away feeling like Tesla was just this little company in the midst of all these big auto manufacturers, and it is, but let's pull out some of these lines separately so they start to make more sense. So okay. let's pull out the GM Oshawa Canada plant. See that okay. line there? Yeah, yeah. it was and making about 7,000 cars a week. Yep, back in 2012. And now it's basically almost none right how about this one uh ford's michigan assembly plant um back in 2012 it was making about six thousand cars a week and now it's down to less than two thousand cars a week wow uh, but let's not just stop there let's do uh, fiat chrysler's warren truck plant in michigan they peaked at almost seven thousand a week in 2017 that was last year and now they're down to 3,000 a week. Or GM's Lansing Grand River plant in Michigan, they peaked at about 2,500 a week in 2016, and now they're down to 2,000 a week. Or BMW Spartansburg, South Carolina, they're trending down. Now, we don't have a, a line for Tesla yet, mm -hmm. uh, because... From last year to this year. Right. So we're going to draw it to the peak. Wow. Yeah. That's... Uh, that's I, a I different almost, data set looking I, I, thing. I almost feel like this chart was uh, kind of misrepresenting what was going on because you just saw this black data above it. Right. But when you start looking at the trends, many of these companies are trending down. Right. These lines should be colorized so you can exactly. see the trends because otherwise you it's don't just know what the lines are doing. Wow, right. That's annoying. We've heard last week about the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, and they issued a report and basically came out that they said that global greenhouse gas emissions must reach zero by 2050 in order to stop global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius, which by the way is 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. If allowed to reach two degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, the earth could hit a tipping point on a course to uncontrollable temperatures. Crap. Now, this came out and sadly, I think many people, probably most people from all different countries, are probably not educated in science enough to understand what this science means for the future of our planet. Right. I think that a lot of people will say, oh, two degrees? <laughs> I can do that on my thermostat. That's no big deal. That just means it's going to be warmer. I like it warmer. Yay. And I mean, easy to brush that off. Exactly. Two, two degrees? Whatever. And let's take someone who should know her stuff. Um, this is Australia's federal environmental minister, Melissa Price. So someone you'd think would be well-versed in the science around mm -hmm. climate change. And well, let's just play this clip. That it's got to be phased out by 2050 it is drawing a very long bow. But, you know, we're a responsible government. We look at these things as, as they do. Um, it's draw sorry, drawing a long bow. These are 91 scientists who their work is peer-reviewed. This is a, a report that Australia has approved of. I just don't know how you could say by 2050 that you're not going to have technology that's going to enable good, clean technology when it comes to, to coal. Basically, um, she's advocating to keep coal in the power mix because she thinks that we'll definitely have a way to burn it cleanly by 2050. 2050 is, uh, is a little over 30 years from now. Right. So she wants to just be burning coal the entire time. Because, up to because some magic technology will come into play by then, which will take care of all the problems in 30 years right great even, i mean we even though have... we have that magic technology now it's called solar and wind and renewables but she just wants to ignore all that and just keep doing it the way she's doing it. now i did a little digging mm -hmm. and i found out that she used to work for the coal industry oh. so a lot like in our country where we started putting people in the epa who worked for coal and oil and gas mm -hmm. um, so that's not good she has basically said we make no apology for the fact that our focus at the moment is getting electricity prices down. What? If you want to get electricity prices down, build more Tesla batteries in your country. That's right. gotten the price of electricity down. It has. And she said that every year there's new technology with respect to coal and what its contribution to emissions. To say that it's got to be phased out by 2050 is drawing a very long bow. This is after the Australian government sat on a report for two months showing that after adjustment for seasonal variation, in the three months of this year, Australia had the highest rates of carbon pollution since 2011. It also revealed a continuation of the trend of upward annual emissions since 2013. And when they finally had to release this report, mm -hmm. they did it on a big sports weekend. 
so that everyone would be, it would get buried in the news and no one would be thinking about it. That's how they operate. They wow. want to basically just hide data and keep going along business as usual. Now, I want to get back to this clean coal idea. Yeah. Because here we're seeing one of the largest coal plants in the United States. Mm -hmm. This is a power plant that burns coal. And you know what comes along with a, a coal plant, what you have to have next to every coal plant? Um, smokestacks, right? That's gotta, the emissions, have, right? Got to have that. Good. That's the bad stuff, that's, right? Uh, that's the stuff that goes in the air. Right. But then after you scrub those smokestacks, you get all this horrible, horrible chemicals like mercury and selenium and lead. Uh -huh. where, where do you put that? You must have to put it in some kind of like sealed container that you store um, somewhere. Eh. The, Sorry, you're getting a lot wrong. Okay, this week. but you put it into a sealed big tank somewhere, and you and you're slowly filtering it. Eh. You're just filtering it. Eh. You ship it somewhere where they reconstitute it into useful. Eh. I don't know. You put it here in a coal ash pond or a coal ash pile. Wait a minute. There's wait a minute, over wait a, minute. a thousand of these sites in the U.S. And in fact, 130 million tons a year. This is the second largest stream of industrial waste in the U.S. It contains arsenic, mercury, lead, selenium, all this stuff. And it gets just put into piles or put into ponds and it sits there. And guess what happens when a hurricane comes along? They cover it with a tarp and they prevent it from doing anything bad? Eh. It just leaks into the waterways. And into our groundwater. So, I mean, you have a hurricane, it floods stuff, it mm -hmm. floods the ash pond, and now the ash pond flows into some tributary or some river, mm -hmm. and now the river just has all this awful coal ash in it? Yep. But it's clean coal. What the, what the hell? Yeah. And this has been going on for decades, and EPA, even though it's regulated by the EPA, the EPA does nothing. Okay, okay, but the, I bet the piles are better, because then they don't float away. Oh, the dry piles? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, um, how about wind? What, what happens to all those little particles of selenium and mercury? And it just gets blown into the wind. And where does it go? I, where? It floats over your house and you breathe it. Nice. Why? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Let's talk about some country that gets it. Okay. Norway. Mm-hmm. Norwegian car sales. In September, EV car sales in Norway had a 45.3% market share. Let me say that again. EVs yeah. had 45% of the market. Holy crap. They had the lowest CO2 emissions, 55 grams per kilometer driven, which is 16 grams per kilometer less than the month before. Wow. And guess what the number one selling car was in September in Norway? I don't know. The Model X. Wow. That beat out every other ice car, every other EV. I mean, we're talking the number one selling car wow. was the Model X. It beat out the Nissan Leaf. The other good news is that there are 30,000 EV pre-orders right now in Norway. People okay. waiting for EV. So look at this. 10,000 are waiting for the Model 3. Wow. 6,300 are waiting for the Audi e-tron Quattro. 6,000 are waiting for the Hyundai Kona Electric. 5,900 waiting for the Kia Nero. 3,000 for the Leaf. 3,000 for the I-Pace. It just goes on. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dice spoke out against the EU Parliament's push for a 40% CO2 reduction by 2030, saying, The transformation in speed and impact is difficult to manage. Wah. Such an industry can crash faster than many believe. Wait, so, we'll slow down there. Yeah. Is he saying what I think he's saying? Yeah, he's basically holding the, uh, the car industry hostage from... Europe and and to Germany. He's basically saying, you know, I've got your workforce here. Don't don't anybody move. Don't anybody change any of these CO2 emissions or all these jobs get it. And they're just holding on to the, all these jobs and he's like, don't do it. How many jobs are we talking about? Um they're saying a roughly 100,000 jobs would possibly, you know, possibly be lost. Well, so let me get this straight, because by 2025, VW hopes that its electric production plan will lead to 3 million electric cars sold every year for, throughout all their brands, VW, Audi, Porsche, etc. Right. So they do want to sell electric cars. Well, oh yeah, they said that, but they're also holding all of these jobs hostage. So VW wants to keep making as much money as possible on a dying technology. These are like not that hard if you start switching to EVs right now. I mean, but, but hitting, I mean the, hitting 40% reductions in CO2 by 2030... Not that hard if you start switching to electric vehicles. But I mean, they they want to do that. And then they also want to step in as the leader in EVs. And I don't understand how you can do both. Like, has there ever been a company that has been like, we're going to wait till technology is exactly where we want it. And then we're going to jump in. Like, has there been like a phone company that did that or a car company that like, have you ever heard of a company that waited and then jumped in and became the leader? I can't think of any no, examples. I can't think if of one. If you can think of an example, please put it in the comment right, below. Because it's normally the newer companies 
that come in and say, we're going to change everything. Right. They disrupt it. Right. Right. And it's the old companies who are just used to doing it the same way. And I mean, like, we're going to, it's fine. Right. I mean, People like, a- still want, they want little buttons well, on their phones. I mean, you, you know, AT&T doesn't make a cell phone. Right. You know, I mean, it's Apple that came along and said, oh, we're going to make a cell phone. Right. And then everybody copied them. Right. Right. So a lot of people have been emailing this week saying that, oh, my gosh, we saw on the Tesla website that if you don't order your car by today, October 15th, you're not going to get the full federal tax credit. And we want to let you know that, first of all, the tax credit doesn't actually run out until December 31st. You have to have your Tesla delivered to you by December 31st. Right. So basically... Tesla's being safe by saying you should order by today because they can't guarantee that your car will be delivered before then. We did hear of many people who have told us in the past few months that they ordered a car and actually got it within weeks. Some people have gotten it within days. So you still might be okay if you order in the next few weeks, but they're just being safe, playing it safe and saying like that. that they can't deadline, guarantee it. Can't guarantee it. Now, let's talk about the fact that Tesla is the first U.S. automaker to hit 200,000 EVs delivered. That's Amazing. Amazing. But I want to point out that there's two bills in Congress that you should know about. One of them is good and one of them is bad. The good one we've talked about before, and that's from Representative Peter Welch from Vermont. And he has a bill introduced, which is H.R. 6274, which would remove the 200,000 vehicle threshold. So that would basically expand the credit for more people. Right. And the thought process behind this is you are giving a disadvantage to companies like Tesla for doing exactly what this act was meant to do, which was to incentivize companies to make EVs. You're disincentivizing them for making EVs because as soon as you hit this number, you don't get any credit. Right. Yeah. That's that's dumb. Why why have it that way? But there's another bill. Okay. And this one we don't like. This is from Senator John Barrasso from Wyoming. And uh, he introduced this bill last week. It's Senate Bill S3559. So make sure you write that down because you're going to need that. Mm -hmm. And this bill would kill the federal tax credit for electric cars. So you wouldn't get any federal tax credit. Not only that, there would be a fee for alternative fuel vehicles. The bill has now been referred to the Committee on Finance. Now, what you're seeing here, these are the senators on that committee. So if you see your state name there... Jot down that senator's name. Give so them a call. Give them a call and say, I am against Senate Bill 3559. It's a piece of crap. Right. And the other thing you should know is that Senator Barrasso is running for re-election because senators in our country have to run every six years. Mm-hmm. And it happens to be that this is the year. So on November 6th, you people living in Wyoming will be able to vote. And I found that there's a guy running against him who does like electric cars. Right. Let's. Uh, let's I just want to show this ad just to, so you can see his own yeah, stuff and make up your mind he's not going to take any money from pax now some, of, some of you might be like why are you being political here well you know i'm being political because senator barrasso did this took almost a half a million dollars from oil and gas companies that's just money just just give, give me the money and i'll do I, whatever you want yes yeah. oh Oh, what's that, Mr. Koch Brothers? Oh, you want me to pass a bill that that gets rid of the electric car credit? Got awesome. It. Got it. I'll, I'll write it I'll tonight. I'll make sure to do that. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, businessman Gary Troner, he is set, he has pledged to take no PAC money whatsoever. Right. So I'm just saying you got a choice. And again, we don't care which side of the aisle these guys come from. Not accepting PAC money is good in my book. Okay. Yep. Don't forget to vote Wyoming, November 6th. And I mean, keep in mind, Wyoming, you don't have that many people in it. So you have a lot of power. Your vote counts a lot. I mean, only about 70,000 people voted for Barrasso in the primary. So that's only 70,000 votes. Right. That's not, it's not going to take a lot. Get we you. have 70,000 people watching our YouTube channel. Now, not all of them are from Wyoming. You could all move to Wyoming. We can all move to Wyoming. <laughs> Listen, guys, just think about this. But yeah, please, please vote. Yeah. Doesn't, I don't care who you are. Vote. Whoa, Jesse, what is this? This looks familiar. This is familiar. This is the Bollinger B2. Now, we've seen the B1. Oh, what's the difference? This is the B2. So, this is a pickup uh, with a bed, which is four foot, one inch wide by five foot, nine inches long. It's a class three truck with a 10,001 gross vehicle weight rating and a hauling capacity of 5,000 pounds uh, with the internal cab tailgate down the all-wheel drive bollinger motors pickup can carry full sheets of plywood that's cool if the rear glass is opened Mm -hmm. it allows the storage to the top of the cab which is 72 sheets of plywood which is what a lot of plywood wow i mean i remember having to you know put plywood in the van and Mm -hmm. then we would drive home with it but it was not 72 (laughs) sheets of plywood that's like what you'd get on a on a flatbed truck wow 120 kilowatt hours of battery nice this is like one of the largest evs battery wise you can get yeah i mean when we had first heard about bollinger they were going to go to china to get their 
trucks made. But earlier this year, we heard they partnered with Optimal, uh, which is in Plymouth, Michigan. So the two companies are now planning on late 2019 for the start of the production of the B1, which Mm -hmm. is that SUV. And they aim to manufacture the B2 on the same assembly line in 2020. This is really exciting. I think that if you haven't checked out these trucks, you should. If you're excited about the Tesla truck, you're definitely going to be excited about the Bollinger truck. And, um, you know, Bollinger actually asked Tesla if they could use their supercharger network. Uh, We haven't heard anything yet because they haven't really started selling any cars. But... That would be cool. That would be really cool. It's time for the lightning round. All right, what do we got here? What is this cool looking uh, setup? So this is a website you can go to to check out the UK's electricity grid status. Wait, so we're seeing live what the UK grid is? Yeah, five minutes roughly updated every five minutes and you can see the demand and the supply, where it's coming from, where it's going to. What I thought was cool is they have this little graph over here which is showing that they have a one gigawatt connection to the Netherlands or Denmark Mm -hmm. and they basically can just send like energy off to them if they need to curtail. Right. Which is really cool. Interesting. Yeah. So this is pictures of Gogoro scooters. Have you heard of those electric scooters, Jesse? Uh, No. Are they from around here? No, they're in Taipei, Taiwan. So uh, they passed a world record the other day. 1,303 Gogoro smart scooters were gathered together, and they drove um, in the rain at 3 a.m. to show their passion for the Gogoro community and zero emissions. Wow. All right, time for a thought experiment, Jesse. If I were to propose that solar Mm -hmm. needed to have pipes installed throughout our country, Mm -hmm. um, that it contained toxic chemicals, that it creates CO2. Mm -mm. Oh, and this could happen. Holy cow, looks like a pipeline explosion. Unbelievable. Here lately today. Whoa, what the, that's solar? Well, I'm just proposing that if if this were what solar could do. No, heck, forget that. Forget it. Forget oh, you'd, it. You'd no say way. no? No way. We're, we're doing something else. That's ridiculous. You, so you'd say no to that? Yeah. What the heck is... That's just a giant fireball. That's like a volcano. Well, it only happens occasionally. Uh, so this happened in Shelley, about 15 kilometers northeast of Prince George, causing hundreds of people to flee. So, I mean, no one died. So, I mean, why wouldn't you... Okay, what... It, Wait a minute. So what what did this? So this was the Enbridge natural gas pipeline. Oh, Um, natural gas. Gotcha. But you just said you wouldn't want my technology if this were to happen. No, I don't think anyone would want that technology. But I just listed everything that happens to natural gas. It contains toxic chemicals. It creates CO2. um, You have to have pipes everywhere. And then it blows up occasionally. Right. But But we all have it. And to be clear, solar does not do any of those things. No. So why don't we have solar? Ahoy, hoy. What the hell? I'm sorry. I'm on a phone call. Ahoy hoy! Why are you saying that? Oh, that's how you answer a phone. No. No, Uh, it's not. That's how Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, wanted you to answer it. Okay. It's also here. Check this out. Uh, Version 9 of the Tesla software has it so that if you hold down the call icon, it will turn into a hoy hoy. Little Easter egg there for you on the Tesla version 9. So, Jesse, I've been getting a lot of emails from people that are like, You know what? EVs aren't so clean. Uh, You got to count making the batteries. They run on coal power. Your little EV argument doesn't hold up. Right. Well, usually they're just measuring like from tailpipe emissions of a regular ice car. And they're not taking into account the whole life cycle of fossil fuels before they get into your gas tank. Yeah, but I can't do those calculations. They're too complicated. So I'm not even going to think about that. Well, luckily, this article in Science explains that producing, transporting, and refining crude oil into fuels such as gasoline and diesel accounts for 15 to 40 percent of the well-to-wheels life cycle greenhouse gas emissions of transport fuels. So what you're saying is that basically the next time someone makes that argument, you can pull out this article and say you're not even counting all of the the actual inputs of of making the gasoline to begin with right just pull this you're article completely out. ignoring the fact that you got to pump it out of the ground you got to transport it you got to refine it mm-hmm. you got to transport it again you got to transport it again then you got to put it in a big tank it's all going to start evaporating out of the tank it's going to be Don't giving people started. cancer i mean yeah wow. wow this week there was a failure of the soyuz rocket um and on board were two astronauts russian cosmonaut alexei ovchinin and Nick Haig from the U.S., they had to abort two minutes after launch on their way to the ISS. Yeah, it's really interesting. This is the first time that a Soyuz has ever had to, like, actually abort mid-flight, which is pretty terrifying because, it, I mean, it's, it's you know, well-tested and everything, but it's the first time it's ever been done. What is this footage right here of them? Are they, like, dancing in their capsule? Uh, no, that's, uh, those are some of the G-forces that they had to endure on their way back from what was going to be in orbit. Did I hear that it was seven times the force of gravity? It was seven Gs? Seven Gs you had to... And so uh, their tiny capsule plummeted more than 30 kilometers in a matter of seconds. 
Yeah. But they're all right. They're all right. So they were, they are fine. This Um, is going to have an impact on, I mean, because they were bringing them up to the ISS. Right. And that at the moment is the only way to get up there. So I don't know if that's going to speed up NASA's timetable or not with uh, SpaceX and uh, Boeing. So our friend Craig sent us this video of people now appearing in version nine navigation. Yeah. This is super interesting. It's actually seeing pedestrians. It's marking them as pedestrians and it's showing them on the screen. Also, if you notice, pulling up behind him is a car. Yeah. Which is something you didn't see before. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, there's no radar behind the car. So is that using the cameras? They're using cameras. Oh my gosh. This is super, super exciting. I, I want to point out, we've never seen pedestrians before. Right. We've seen motorcycles. We've seen trucks. We've seen, we've cars. seen cars. But this is incredible. Yeah. And mean, I think this is an exclusive. I haven't seen this anywhere else. Right. So thank you, Craig. All right. There's been a Tesla Powerwall price increase. A lot of people reporting that the 13.5 kilowatt hour Powerwall went from $5,900 to $6,700. And they're saying, oh, you know, this is just way too expensive. Right. I want to point out that that is because they can get the price for it. Right. The There's a super high demand. so high that basically they're like, listen, we need to increase the price just so that way we can make sure that there's availability. But also they're making the product better. Did you know that the latest Powerwall is 10 pounds lighter than last year's model and you can now scale to 10 units instead of nine. So they're making continual improvements to it. As Tesla told Electric, we occasionally adjust our global pricing to best reflect what we are offering to customers and the value of our products. The price adjustments made today are the latest example of that. Right. Again, when people are so down on Tesla and they're like, oh, they're gonna go bankrupt. They have a product that's so in demand, they can keep raising the price of it. Right. So there was a lot of worrying controversy from uh, the Financial Times that said that James Murdoch was the lead candidate to replace Elon Musk as Tesla's chairman. And that's pretty scary because uh, James Murdoch is the son of Rupert Murdoch, who's uh, an asshole. Okay. And uh, yeah, but Musk that would tweeted be bad. out, uh, he said, this is incorrect. So, again, Financial Times, like, where do you get your information from? Right. There's always these developing stories, developing stories. And they're telling you, like, we don't know anything, but this is what's happening. And then later on, it's like, yeah, that wasn't actually true at all. That's what we're here. We're trying to tell you the most accurate information. Some weeks, you're going to be like, why have I not heard about this piece of news? Because we don't know everything about it. This next story is a good example of that. I mean, Tesla, according to Bloomberg, is close to signing a $145 million deal to buy land outside of Shanghai, China, for its new Gigafactory 3. The Chinese government could decide as soon as this month, according to Bloomberg. And currently, as we know, there's a 40% tariff for Tesla importing to China. Right. Now, this deal has not been signed. We don't know if it's true. We're just reporting that that's what Bloomberg said. But we don't know. We just want to keep you in the loop. But again, we don't know. It's time for video contributor stories. And what do we got this week, Jess? We got Joshua and James, and they went for kind of a long bike ride. All right. Several years ago, my youngest son Joshua and I set an ambitious goal to take our bicycles across our 7,181 kilometer country of Canada. But Joshua's mother was not in favor of our goal and suggested that we first take our bicycles across our 530 kilometer province of Manitoba. If Joshua and I could accomplish the provincial goal, then we could consider the Canadian goal. I agree. A few weeks ago, Joshua and I accomplished the first goal and biked across our province of Manitoba on three separate days. From the border of Saskatchewan, we biked to our home village of Plumas, Manitoba. From Plumas, Manitoba, we biked to the capital city of our province, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And from Winnipeg, Manitoba, the capital, we bike to the Ontario border. Since the Canadian bike ride will be an ambitious goal, I determined that the bike ride would take 10 to 12 weeks. At best, I can only take four weeks of holidays at one time, once a year. The goal to bike across our country in one trip was looking rather bleak until Joshua and I considered taking electric bikes that would provide a longer range. An electric bike was placed in the back of my mind through Zach and Jesse's YouTube channel, Now You Know. When Joshua and I decided to take electric bikes across the country, we determined two things. One, we would make our second film from here to there while educating our viewers on all the benefits of electric bikes and two, we would replace our gas-guzzling, oil-spilling lawnmower with an all-electric lawnmower so that we could run an all-electric business. 
Joshua and I hope to establish our all-electric business with all-electric tools and an all-electric vehicle in order to be truly all-electric. Joshua and I want to personally thank Zach and Jesse for all the work that they do. We are just a small part of what you are doing to educate the entire world. We hope that you and your viewers support us in any way you can, as we will continue to support you and your viewers in the ways that we can. Please support us at Patreon, visit us at YouTube, Facebook, and our webpage. Cheers. They biked across a province of Canada? Wow. I can't, I mean, I can't even think about biking across like this state, like north to south. And they're the getting way. ready to bike across the whole country? Wow. First of all, your wife and your mother there are very smart to, to give you like, okay, first start with the province. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, really cool that you're going to be showing off electric bikes to everybody. Really neat. All right. It's time for our Patreon bonus stories. Head on over to Patreon for as little as a buck a month and you'll get to hear about, well, let's just tell them what are some of the stories right, they yeah. might hear about. And I want to mention, we can't show these on Tesla Time News because a lot of them are using footage that we don't own. Right. And so we can't monetize it. But I mean, we're going to be talking about the latest developments at Boston Dynamics. Yeah. We're going to be showing you an EV that can go backwards faster than a Porsche. Yep. So yeah, if you want to check those out, head on over. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our shout outs. These are people who give $5 or more a month to our show. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. Here we go. Who do we got, Jess? We got Martin Picard, Sheldon Plen, Gottfried Webster, Steve and Rita Kempf, Christopher Botner, Gabor Raviz, Richmond Clemens, Charles R. Samples, Vadim Schulman, David McKay, Steon Conradson, Ivan Ivanov, Brendan Payne, Ted Unsworth, and Dave Birchenoff. Thank you so much for supporting us, guys. We couldn't do this show without you. Nope. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. Here we go. All right, first one is, no such thing as a full refresh at Tesla or even a model year. Our cars are partially upgraded every month. As soon as a new subsystem is ready for production, there is no cadence. So that was right. a question coming from Fred Lambert at uh, electric and he was asking when's the new refresh and right. elon's like you know what we just we keep refreshing now i don't think that's completely true i think there's going to be some kind of model s and x refresh but um elon's trying to point out you keep getting new stuff all the time also this one tesla Kila coming soon wow along with a visual representation of the bottle yeah and uh this is why we love this guy Tesla exists to help reduce risk of catastrophic climate change, which affects all species on Earth. Even if your faith in humanity is faltering, this is worth caring about. Support makes a difference. Thank you. Oh, and this one from Yuzaku Matsawa. He says, do I need a passport to go to the moon, Elon Musk? Hmm. What did Elon say? He said it might be wise to bring it just in case. And then Chris Harrison said, don't forget to bring a towel, too. Elon says that it comes with free towels because there is nothing more useful in the entire universe. Yeah is very true. Uh, Safian Fravel says, how about seeing other Teslas on the dash screen when in autopilot? Would be cool if it recognized Roadster 3, S, X, and later Y, Semi, and Pickup. And Elon said, maybe this could be a part of a safe car version of Pokemon Go style game. <laughs> that would be cool That'd if be you fun. could drive along and play Pokemon Go or Tesla Go, like Tesla Mon Go, Tesla Mon Go. All right, it's time for community mail time. Here we go. So our friend Alex wrote to us to remind all of you that a few emails to a boss or a restaurant or a business could alert them to installing Tesla destination chargers. Alex includes a YouTube link to a Tesla video, maybe like ours, mm -hmm. showing off what these cars can do, like AP and telling the business about the Tesla Charging Partners program, which pays for most, if not all, of the cost of installation and increase business. Mm -hmm. Our friend Matthias has told us about an event coming up on the 18th of October in Lausisring, Germany. Tesla owners and residents of the area will be coming together to shine lights on Starman to get Elon's attention to build the next gigafactory there. Now, they have lots of good arguments, including the fact that they have over 25,000 coal mining jobs in the region. And since the German government has pledged to stop coal mining, there'll be lots of available workers who could work at the new gigafactory. Yep. With the Model 3, we often forget to mention how amazing the Model X is. And I think that Sparky would agree. Yep. So our friend Jan created this web page called teslamodelxspecs.online that you can open in the web browser of the X to remind yourself of all the wonderful and amazing features that the Model X has. That was really good of him to make. This is gonna be really useful when you're showing off the car at like uh, car shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. People can just scroll down through the specs, 
and they're all really amazing. Our friend Brighton sent us these pictures of the Tesla Next Gen Roadster when his friend went to the Tesla factory to pick up his Model 3. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to remind you, Jesse, that we'll be getting one of these. That's going to be crazy. Uh, I'm not sure what color we should get. The red looks so good. It does look good. Our friend David here took his aero wheels on his Model 3 and he said, I wanted to show you what I did with my aero wheels. Most would agree that the aero wheels are kind of ugly, but rather than spend $1,500 for the better looking performance wheels, I took the caps to the body shop and for $300, I went from dark to light. What do you think? Hmm. What do you think? I think it looks good. I don't know if it's $300 good. I'm sure I could do it for less, but yeah. <laughs> you and a spray can would yeah. definitely, yeah. Definitely do the I don't know if they'd hold up. It but... doesn't matter. Okay. Get some new, whatever. Now, do you remember when we sent Mr. G, our friend uh, who's the shop teacher in New Jersey, we sent him and his students the Tesla high power wall charger that I ran over with my snowblower? Yes, that thing was broken. Yeah. And yeah. I, I kind of was like, here you go, here Mr. You go. G. Here you go. Don't, we'll don't get... electrocute yourself. Check this out. Yep. This is Mr. G, this is your one minute video. All right, come on in. This is the electric vehicle auto shop. We built the electric car right here. Check it out. It's all batteries in a 1990 Volkswagen, right? How do you make an electric car? Simple. Take a car, delete the engine, add a motor, add a speed controller, add a battery, and boom, you got that. Now, we upgraded, all right? Uh, check this out. Thanks to Now You Know, thanks to Zach and Jesse from Now You Know, they got us a Tesla charger, right? We have plugged it into the wall, it had some damage and we fixed it. And we're gonna turn on the breaker. Boom, 50 amp breaker. It lights right up, goes through its sequence of starting up, and then boom, there's your plug. So come on down to 5501 Park Ave, West New York, New Jersey, and we have a Tesla charger for you. The reason we would like you to come around is really to educate and show the students, the new generation, that electric cars are an actual thing and show, you know, have the public come on in and use the charger. Just make sure you call ahead and let me know. My number's on plug share. And uh, I'll see you soon. He's he fixed actually, it. He his, fixed his, it. First of all, his students fixed it. I yeah. saw videos of his students fixing it. So, wow. Congratulations to you because that was not easy. Those cables are wicked complicated. Yeah. And, and now you're charging people's cars. Yeah. And for five miles around the school, there is no destination charger. So, he just put on the map a place for Teslas to charge. Right. And it's 40 amps. Yeah. That's huge. That's yeah. a really powerful charger. Yeah. So this is Jason's new Model 3 Performance. Says he picked up my Performance Model 3 nine days ago, and I've already driven 1,947 kilometers. I can't stop driving it. Oh, my. It's like driving a cloud, a very fast cloud, and I love it. Is that even possible? Our friend Gasper sent us this story. Uh, just went this morning to Santa Monica Beach, as I do sometimes, to get in touch with nature. I was utterly heartbroken when I arrived at the shore to find it full of plastic waste. Waste. Within the garbage, a tiny glass bottle stuck out. It looked interesting somehow, so I picked it up. Inside of it, there was a few shells. I tried to get them out and couldn't. All of a sudden, a very sad reality sank in. Those organisms went inside the bottle and were never able to make it out. So they grew and spent their whole existence in that tiny bottle, our waste. Our garbage became the prison and only home these tiny organisms ever knew. I was so sad. I decided to make my scholarship project inspired and based on this experience. So Gaspar is, an, is a designer and he wants to basically design for Tesla. So we're hopefully going to follow him over the next few years mm -hmm. and see what he's up to. All right. Our friend Eli from My Tesla Adventure has developed this. The Adventures of Starman documents the SpaceX launch of the Falcon Heavy and the beginning of Starman's adventures. It is both art and history wrapped into an incredibly beautiful collector's edition comic book. We both got our copies this week. So fun to read. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought I was a, a Elon Musk fan. I am nowhere near the level of fan <laughs> that Eli is. This wow. is incredible. You can get your copies at theadventuresofstarman.com. And it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. This is our patron Sean's Blue Model 3 named Potter with white interior. All right, it's time for our Patreon viewer question of the week. Crafty Geek asked, can the franchise dealership model survive the lower maintenance reality of a fully electric powertrain? Is this another signal of legacy automakers systematic incapability to adapt to full battery electrification? Right. Won't be able to survive. And this is a signal that they aren't going to be able to uh, adapt. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we remember how the um, dealership model came about, that was from Ford. 
and from based, Henry Ford. Henry Ford. I don't know if I remember that because I don't think that I was like around when you that weren't? was going on. So basically, what Ford did was he he was making these Model Ts, mm-hmm. right? And he didn't want to keep them on the books. Basically, you make a car and you got to wait till someone comes along to buy it, and that could be months. So he had to basically you would have to take out loans to to keep that inventory. Oh, because you have to keep buying parts with. Right money that you don't have right because i mean Uh, you're right when you're when you're a factory you're buying parts from suppliers you got to pay them mm -hmm. usually within 30 60 90 days interesting but your car could sit on the lot for up to a year or more right yeah so what he did was he invented this dealership system he said dealer you buy them off me immediately you take that risk so dealers took those cars and had to get the mortgages on them right had to get the loans and then figure out a way to sell them that's why dealers have all these crazy sales all the time they're trying to get cars off the lot so the way tesla does it is within 28 days of buying it online they build it and deliver it to you tesla's suppliers when they first started wanted their money in 30 days so that was a tight they basically was a tight squeeze was a tight huh? squeeze Interesting. but now they have a lot more clout so they're able to push those out to you know 60 90 days so now tesla doesn't have the problem that all other car dealers have which is I have this car sitting in my lot and I'm losing money every day because I'm paying an interest loan on it to have it sit here and not sell. And then I finally have to mark it down, mark it down, mark it down so that you'll buy it. Because once a 2018 model, once it becomes 2019, it loses so much value. Right. Teslas don't have that problem. They don't even have model years. Right. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Hi, Zach and Jesse. I'm here at the Sarah Monte uh, Supercharger or here in Daly City. 39. Stalls. That's one of the largest ones I think I've ever been to. It's an urban supercharger and we're right on top of the parking garage uh, here in Daly City and there's a mall nearby which has you know a Target um, and a few other shops here and there. Um, but yeah and there's an elevator which will take you down to the ground floor. Um, so it's pretty easy to get to the shopping center. And I would rate this one because it's like so easy to get to um, as, and there's quite a few like food places around and so on as 8 out of 10. Hello, it's Mark and Jesse Constantine here from the Forstall Supercharger in Revelstoke, BC, Canada. It's located in front of the Best Western Hotel just off Highway 1. Next to it, you can see San Manuel, which has two buildings, and also the closest place to it, a venue, not even one minute walk from the superchargers. That concludes my supercharger review from Revelstoke, BC, Canada. This is Irschenberg supercharger in Germany, south of Munich. There are six stalls car wash, self wash nearby or automatic, uh, some vacuum cleaning, self service, uh, yeah, the petrol station and the uh, shop but no Wi-Fi. About half a mile that way there is a big shopping center and McDonald's and everything else but not here. So yeah, not the best location, but quite good nonetheless. I would rate it 7 out of 10. Now you know. One of my favorite times of the week yeah, is, is watching them. I like, just want to remind everyone that you can also do destination charger reviews. Mm-hmm. So if you have a cool destination charger. Um, at a restaurant or hotel. Right. Find it. Make a quick review. Goes on our website. Mm -hmm. All right, time for new superchargers. What's gone online this week, Jess? We got number 55 in Canada, the 12-stall urban supercharger in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Number 571 in the U.S. is the 16-stall in Pembroke Pines, Florida. Number 22 in Australia and 1,373 in the world is the 6-stall at Canberra, Australian Capital Territory, Australia. It's time for businesses for rewarding Elon employees. We're up to 57 businesses, and this week it's Genlessis Games. Our offer helps these employees enjoy their free time gaming. Every PDF we produce, we will offer a 80% discount. You can buy our complete product line of gaming materials for $20. 
So this is pretty cool. It's role playing games. And uh, I mean, I know they're in the middle of Idaho, but obviously you don't have to go there. You can just buy them online right. and then play and them so wherever you like, want. This is like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons. Were you into D&D? &D? Uh, no, I think I broke like half of your lead uh, Dungeons <laughs> yeah. and Dragons toys. So we've shot a lot of videos. And uh, the problem with YouTube and the internet is that once things move down that list, you don't find them again. Right. But this interview you should go check out. This is our interview with Akoja. Um, you can save the planet while you search. Go find out what we're talking about. All right, it's time for our Patreon giveaway, Jess. Yep, here we go. All right. It's the Patreon giveaway. We are giving away a free SFSF t-shirt, which you can see here. You can actually get whatever SFSF t-shirt you want. So let's pick from the box here. All right, and uh, to get your name in there, every dollar you give us as a Patreon per month gets you another card. So the more you give, the more chances to win. Yep, all right, I'm gonna reach. He's going straight in, folks. Got a, I think I got, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, hold on, it almost whoa. got away from me. All right, who do we got? Right, let's see, we got Jonathan Doig. All right, you're our winner. Uh, we will contact you, and you can pick out any SFSF t-shirt, also mugs, sweatshirts, and other cool stuff. Thank you so much for watching the show. Uh, you know, we put a lot of time and effort into the show, and we really do appreciate your support. If you want to support us by just doing your normal Amazon shopping, you can do that too. Use our Amazon affiliate link, one for the U.S., mm -hmm. one for international. It doesn't cost you anything, and uh, we get a little bit of money every time you buy something, and it's actually substantial yeah so it's really helpful it allows us to do things that we otherwise would be like i would love to go do that but it, that's too expensive you know and we're saving we're saving up to like you know go on a trip to see you know a rocket launch or oh, an yeah. unveiling of a car i mean we really want to bring that stuff to you and this makes it all possible and you know that reminds me when we went to one of the unveilings uh was it uh the, the tesla semi unveiling mm -hmm. we were one of the few people that could actually live stream because Tesla's live stream went down mm -hmm. and we were live streaming and like lots of people needed our live stream to see what was going on. So right. like, we try really hard when we go to these events to bring you along with us. Right. So yeah, every, every dollar you give us really helps us to do that. Also, don't forget to use my referral code for buying your SX or Model 3 Performance because we're going to come meet you in the next generation Roadster and blow your mind. I mean, That's would you like to go be... for a ride in that thing? Because no one else is offering this and yeah. we've already definitely got one car. And so we're still offering it. Why? Because we just want to give people rides. Right. We want to do a tour of the entire continent and, you know, Europe as well. We're also doing Europe. We've secured a car. Car secured. Yeah. We've done it. So, I mean, we're going to, it's going to be crazy, but we're going to be able to meet people all over the world, give them a ride in the fastest That's car gonna in the world. That's going to be so fun. I can't wait to do that. Um, don't forget that if you want to listen as a podcast, we're on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, so you can listen. You don't have to watch. That way, if you're in the car, it works out really well. Um, and don't forget that if you want to race a semi-truck, there's a chance that you can get that. If you sign up for Tesla's newsletter using my referral code, you can get a chance to win that race. Right, which... and it's a free newsletter. Yeah, it doesn't cost you anything. And I mean, we've already won a spot, so we're going to be racing it. I'm assuming mm -hmm. we're going to assign you to do that. Yep, been um, practicing. Um, so yeah, you get to race against Jesse's time, I guess. Mm -hmm. I I'm gonna, somewhere. I'm gonna blow you out of the water. Not even funny how <laughs> good at racing semis I'm gonna be. Are you, have you been practicing on like, like uh, Euro, Euro truck simulator? Truck? Yeah, it's really hard because you gotta shift a lot, and on the semi you don't have to shift at all. So it's gonna be my time's just gonna be so much better. Although, oh, that's true. Okay, against yeah. your other times, I see. Yeah. And then all these names that you're seeing fly past here, if you give $5 or more a month uh, as a Patreon, you're gonna get your name on here too, because it's important to, to show the community who you are. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that every week. So thank you so much for supporting us. Thanks so much for watching to the end. We love you guys. And by the way, all right, I've determined that hitting the like button does make a big difference. Okay. So if you want to, you can hit the like button, and essentially you can think of it as like a sharing with a stranger. So someone who is just sort of browsing along, watching YouTube, they're probably watching something that's in some way related to Tesla or electric cars or sustainability. They might be looking at a solar video and they might not have heard about Tesla. They might not have heard about some of the things that we're talking about. That's cool. You can share this with that person that you do not know. And I forget to hit the like button a lot when I'm watching videos. Yeah, and I don't like it. I don't want there to be a like button. Mm -hmm. I want there to be like a watch till the end function where right. it's like, oh, wow, you know, we have about 50% of the people watch to very close to the end. You know, this part, obviously, a lot of people skip. But I'm right. just saying, 
it's crazy. If you have a TV, you know, if you're watching this on, on your TV or whatever, and there's no easy way to do it, like, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world, but it makes a difference. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Now, now you know. You know.